Good morning and welcome back to our Ask the Agronomist video series. I'm Kyla Watson here with Phil Long. Phil, how are things in your world? Uh, things are looking good. I mean, this morning it's a beautiful day, so we got to be thankful for that. Yeah, absolutely. Sun is shining bright this week, isn't it? Yep, nice warm, warm summer day. I wish we'd get a little bit of rain, but I know uh, at this point, you know, we're, we're just happy to have the sun, so... Right, absolutely. Well, today we're going to be talking about extreme weather with focus on the derecho and then also the drought. Yeah, yeah, there's been uh, several very severe storms, you know, this this year, it seems like 2020 just to some extent keeps on giving. Um, but uh, we've had a lot of issues come up and a lot of things to talk about agronomically uh, this year in 2020. Right, a lot of different situations going on throughout our whole entire territory. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, let's start with the derecho front of things. Um, and obviously, unfortunately, a lot of cornfields are flat. What does that mean for farmers or where can they be looking for their next steps? Sure, yeah, it seems like I know there's been a lot of satellite images and so forth. I've even seen images of, of the loss of uh, power and showing the limited lights on in the cities and small towns in Iowa. Um, and it's not just Iowa, you know, it's, it's throughout uh, Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa, even some of Nebraska and into Illinois and a little bit into Indiana. So, I mean, it's, it's very widespread and just a, a, a huge storm that did a lot of damage with really high winds. I was out there last week in some of the harder hit areas and it's uh, not easy to, to look at. Uh, and it's, it's a challenging just because it's so widespread. There's not just a small path. It's, it's a very wide swath of, of damage. Right, and fields are in different conditions, whether they're pinched off, laying flat, or just um, maybe folded over for now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there, there's, you know, when you drive past some of those cornfields, you know, in general, the soybeans fared really well. I was out there just a couple days afterwards, and they are standing back up. They were bent over, leaned a little bit, um, but they're going to stand up all right and be just fine, minus the ones that got hail. Um, but the, the cornfields is really where the devastation is. Um, and, and, and you can see when you drive by them that there's a lot of them laid over. So root lodge, they're still hanging on by the roots, but they're leaned over. Um, there's a lot of them that are snapped off. Uh, then there's a lot of them that are, that are pinched off. So it looks like they're broken off, but maybe they're still maintaining some connection there between the, the top and the bottom of the plant that was snapped. So all of those are really, it make for a big challenge when it comes to this, this fall and harvest. Uh, you know, if you look at the ones that are laid flat, those ones are, are likely going to struggle. They're not going to stand back up at this point in the season. Uh, the corn crop uh, getting into dent stage is, is well past done growing. Um, so it may try to stand up just because of the effects of gravity. But um, the, the ear and the weight of that ear out there, uh, which in a lot of cases in those areas was, was actually a really good part of the state in terms of uh, yield uh, forecasts. Um, so it's going to be really tough for that plant to pull the weight of that ear and everything back up. So it's going to likely be leaned at harvest. Um, you're going to see a reduction in, in grain fill and test weight because those ears, you know, they're all laying flat, crisscrossed over each other. So the photosynthesis is not going to help finish things out. You're going to see a reduced test weight and so forth going into the end of grain fill. But those will finish, um, and but they'll just be in an unfortunate position for harvest. You know, so the ones that snapped off or, or pinched off, so the ones that snapped off, uh, are, are done. Those ones are, are going to probably start to rot in the fields. Um, we're going to have corn that's um, moldy and in bad condition, um, which is unfortunate because if you're out trying to pick up some of the laid down corn, you have pinched off or pinched off or broken corn, you're going to be getting much poorer quality grain uh, into the combine. It's kind of kind of grain quality you don't want to store. Uh, uh, nobody really wants to store. So the, the pinched off stuff, I have an example of that here. It looks broken off here. It actually was attached a little bit just by a small cord on one side of it here uh, several weeks ago when it snapped. Um, but that, that point of attachment is going to keep it just barely alive. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to continue. It's, it's, it's realized that something major has happened. So it's going to try to just finish. It's going to get the black layer as early as it can. So obviously reduce test weight. Um, and and any, any of this corn that's, that's on the ground like this is going to uh, really have an issue with grain quality and ear molds because uh, it's so close to the ground we've got moisture down there and then that's going to trap it with all those leaves down there on top of the ground it's going to trap that moisture as well so a lot of potential issues when it comes to grain quality 
uh, storage. I know I've heard some estimates on the amount of bins down and so forth, so it's tough to make a decision on how much to store. Um, but if, if there is an option to, you know, to, to get rid of some of that as you harvest it, especially the stuff that's uh, snapped and potentially really poor grain quality, uh, moving that off, off farm is probably the best bet if you, if you can at all. Uh, I know there's a lot, of, a lot of issues with grain storage down there just by driving through, so I imagine that's going to be a huge challenge as we get closer to harvest and, and where everything's going to go. So um, just a lot of, lot of challenges with that storm, especially with the corn crop that really had a lot of great potential and uh, likely high yield uh, expectations. Right, exactly. And what about stock and ear rot? Yeah, we talk about stock and ear rots every year, so this really pertains to everybody. But, you know, with a focus on the, the storm, the derecho and so forth that went through, it's going to be a compounding effect, unfortunately. You know, you may not think that stock rot is, is a problem uh, with the condition of the corn and where it's where it's at, but any of this, this corn that was damaged by hail, bent over, snapped off, whatever, is obviously predisposed if it's still alive. Uh, to stock rots, um, which is going to affect harvestability and ultimately, you know, like I said, lead to more ear, ear molds. And that's one thing we don't want to see. It's just a huge challenge to, uh, you, you don't get better grain uh, after putting into storage. So you got to start out with really high grain quality uh, and, and typically it goes down a little from there. So to start with poor quality grain uh, and then put it into storage is going to be probably the biggest challenge uh, this fall that those farmers are going to have in that area. So keeping an eye on those things once you get ready to harvest is going to be take a lot of planning uh, because once harvest starts uh, it's going to be a slow process. Uh, whether you can get a hold of a, a corn reel or whatnot um, is going to probably help some of that and probably require a lot of one-way travel and so forth if you can. If your field was planted in such a way that you can do that and make it a little easier uh, but there's still going to be lots of debris out there from what I've seen uh, that's likely hidden in some of those fields that'll make it a challenge and, and a safety uh, issue this fall. Moving along to the other areas of our territory, a lot of our farmers are also struggling with drought. Do you have any insight on um, either the corn and soybean side of it and the type of effects they might be looking at? Yeah, so <laughs> drought, it seems like it's kind of spreading. I know uh, early on when we were seeing drought issues in, kind of in the central part of Iowa, uh, up in the Wisconsin, they had some more uh, high moisture diseases showing up, and, but it's kind of spreading everywhere now. We're, we're kind of in a dry uh, area, a large area is in a, in a dry spot right now. Um, so there's a lot of leaf firing going on, the, you know, as, as corn especially gets uh, more stressed for moisture, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to roll up and start firing or the leaves will start senescing from the bottom to the top of the plant. So, you know, really there's no great uh, exact measurement for that, but if you start seeing corn, which in many of these areas is well past this point, but uh, leaves that are rolling up early in the day when it's not even that hot, um, if they're le rolling leaves early in the day, then they're severely stressed. So at that point, if you've had a few days of that, uh, you're going to be see starting to see, especially in grain fill, three to four bushel uh, an acre loss per day in some of those areas. So um, a, a big challenge uh, for those guys as well. I know uh, a lot of the parts saw it around pollination, so it really affected pollination in corn. Um, it's been a, a challenge, but yeah, the, the, there's going to be a lot of, lot of challenges around the drought side too. I mean, stock rot is, is huge in, in when you're talking about drought stress because it it's, uh, not, doesn't have the moisture coming from the roots. Uh, so it's going to try and, you know, and the leaves are starting to senesce, so it needs to get those nutrients uh, from somewhere, those, those carbohydrates. So it's going to steal it from the bottom, uh, from the stalk, uh, the easiest to get to, to get it into that ear. So you're going to have compromised stalks and, and, and uh, you know, potential stock rot issues going into harvest as well. So one of those things, it's, it, it's going to try to get to maturity once again uh, more quickly. Um, so likely we'll kind of cut off the, the longer period of grain fill. You know, you want to, ideally for high yields, you want to you want that grain fill, fill period to stick around as long as you can. That's why a lot of farmers spray fungicides because it maintains that and lets them put more into the ear, it stretches that out a little bit further. But in this case, with the drought conditions we're having, a lot of those are going to be cut short um, to try and get to black layer and finish out those those kernels. So. Yeah, a, a challenge on the on the corn side for sure with the drought. Okay, and what effects does this have on our soybeans? Sure. So, 
soybeans there's a lot i know even in this area the, the sandy areas and so forth and if you go south you begin to see a lot of, of severely stressed soybeans uh, this is obviously the worst time to have stress in soybeans i would say going into uh, flowering um, is not ideal typically if you have severe stress in soybeans during flowering you can see upwards of 20 percent yield loss just because you're, you're dropping flowers, the potential pods. So you're dropping flowers and pods at that point. And then you get to this point um, and you're trying to fill those out. So you have a reduced number of pods on the plant uh, and then you don't have the moisture to finish filling out those beans. So you're gonna have smaller beans, less beans, obviously seed, seed abortion as well uh, and pod abortion. So a lot of those things come into play. It just depends on, you know, the particular variety has a, a little bit of an impact on how well it handles those things and how well it gets through those those periods of stress but in general uh, stress during uh, pod fill uh, is not uh, it's probably the worst time for the soybean plant to have uh, moisture stress okay very good is there anything else that you would like to add this morning no you know i know we have a, a field day at least a, a virtual field day coming up and i know we're going to have some of these topics as well covered uh, for for all those farmers in, in all these different situations we just 2020 has been a crazy year, so there's a lot to talk about, and we'll, we'll help uh, help lead some of the farmers through some of those uh, decisions, tough decisions that they have to make coming up here for fall harvest. All right, every year provides a new opportunity, right? There's always a new opportunity around the bend. All right, very good. Well, thank you for joining us this morning, and thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Have a good day.